Hello everybody, Dr. Novak here. I uh, I just want to show you, I just did a test on the Goldfish Aquarium, which is about six months old now, and the nitrates were 15.9. And the reason I wanted to show people this is, you have to remember the Goldfish Aquarium one is heavily stocked for that 40 gallon breeder. Number two, the fish are heavy eaters. Not only are they being fed, fed at least twice a day, but we have to remember they are constantly eating plant matter, which goldfish do. So they never stop eating, just like the aquarium next to me right here. These two goldfish are constantly eating, and you can tell by their waist being green that they're constantly eating algae or constantly eating plant matter, or they're eating what I am feeding them, the same way as the 90 of the 90 gallon, it's not as bad, but the 40 gallon, it's just as bad or worse than even this tank because you have four big goldfish in there. Now, six big goldfish, not four. And these goldfish are very heavy eaters. So not only eating what I'm feeding them, but the algae and plant matter. So anyhow, the nitrates after six months going to 15.9 less than 20 parts per million. But we also have to remember, these are heavy feeding fish, eating constantly, whether it's going to be what I feed them or the plant matter that's in the aquarium. And if you think about it, that's, that's not too bad, but we will see, and I wanted to take that test for you, so you could see that if you're one of those people, and I've always said this, I made an oxy filter, and uh, uh, my nitrates are still high. Well, here's one that's six months old. Nitrates are 15.9. So, yes, nitrates are still high. But uh, for the, if you take into account the size of the fish, the amount of food they are eating compared to a lot of fish that don't eat continuously all day, they only eat what we give them, uh, that's not too bad. But I will keep you in check with that particular aquarium like once a month so we can see if that nitrate cycle finally breaks as the tank ages. Anyhow, the, the main thing of what this whole video is about, I just watched a video uh, with Aquarium Co-op. And I watch Aquarium Co-op. I watch a lot of different people. But uh, apparently... He had his 800 gallon tank, he took his filter apart. The filter was uh, dirty and people made, you know, a dirty filter, you know, that deteriorates your water quality. And uh, basically in a nutshell, what he said is no, that does not determine water quality. I made a comment, normally I don't make comments on other people's videos, but uh, this time I made a comment and said, you are absolutely right. Uh, people have to understand if you're watching my channel or anybody else's channel for that matter. Uh, just because you may have a dirty canister filter or dirty hang on the pack filter or a dirty dirt magnet filter doesn't mean water quality is being jeopardized. Now that's a two bladed sword and when I say something like that we have test equipment that can actually test your water to make sure that if you have a dirty canister or a dirty hang on the pack you can actually test your water I've had videos on it with a redox meter, and this will tell you your ORP, and this is going to tell you the amount of oxidizers you have to break down waste in your aquarium, okay? Um, the higher your redox, the more oxidizers you have, period. So you could be running a very dirty canister filter, which I have shown on my video, that's five, six months old, and still have a very high redox reading and not be showing any deterioration of your water quality. Okay, he was very right in saying that. A lot of people assume that if you have a dirty canister filter or hang on the back filter, you're jeopardizing water quality, and that is not so. But, but, with that being said, it, this also will depend on how your tank is set up, what you are using in conjunction with that 
canister filter, hang on the back filter, sponge filters. Because I've seen uh, your sponge filters are dirt magnets, as they really are called, be very, very dirty and fry eating right off the sponges. And these are breeders. So apparently if that sponge is that dirty, it should be deteriorating water quality, which it is not because the fish are spawning, breeding, and seem to like that water quality. A long time ago, we had filters that went inside the aquarium, little box filters that worked by a bubbler, and uh, people would leave the top off. So the water would come in, and then the fry would just eat what was on top, basically like they do a sponge filter. And I remember seeing that as a, a, as a young lad and, and asking about that, how dirty it was. And I remember the breeder telling me back then that uh, this is because the fry will eat the microorganisms and stuff off of there. And it's not deteriorating the water quality because, you know, his fish are spawning and this is another food source for him. So you learn a lesson that just because your filter is dirty doesn't mean poor water quality. However, don't assume that if you're not doing things right, that you can now give you a pass to having a dirty filter. Because depending on how your tank is set up, depending on what you're using, these all play or key players in water quality. The best thing to do is find out if you have bad or good water quality is you have to use the correct test equipment to see if you have that good or bad water quality. If you are not using the test equipment, you're guessing. And the best way to guess is by doing maybe a water change with some pure clean water that's not been contaminated through the aquarium. That's why we exchange water. Plus, when we exchange water, it adds back into the salts. It may add uh, other things back in. A carbonated hardness it will add back in. Here in Florida, the water is very hard. Uh, so you're at, I'm adding that back into my aquariums when I do a water exchange. Uh, but it doesn't mean bad water quality. And I'm not really doing the exchange of water because I see the fish are showing signs of, of disease or I'm having bad algae problems. I'm doing it to replenish what's being taken out of the aquarium. And this could be taken out for a lot of different reasons, plant matter, fish, respiration, uh, just pollution itself, bacteria. So all these may have to be replenished on that, but that all depends on each hobbyist. Like I said, in my pond, I only did water changes twice a year. That was it. Once in fall, once in early spring, that was it. That's all the water change they got. They had water added to their pond every single day because of evaporation. But other than that, no, water changes were not done. So I wanted to make this video because uh, I thought it was an interesting video that Aquarium Co-op did with the question they asked, does a dirty canister or hang on the back filter mean poor water quality because you haven't changed it in a long time? No, it does not. If you understand redox and the redox potential of that particular aquarium, that lets you know how the water quality is going. And usually when tanks start collapsing is because something that you're doing or something that you're using is not performing up to par like it's supposed to be and the system then fails. And I get lots of emails of people saying that I've had, I'm using this particular way of setting up aquarium. And after a year, I noticed uh, I was getting all kinds of algae problems and things like this because the system they are using is collapsing. And we all know about that because it happens uh, throughout the hobby. What we're trying to prevent is not for that to happen. So I just want to elaborate on a little bit with this video that just because you have a dirty canister, it maybe hasn't been changed. Hang on the back filter, you've got some big ones, they haven't been changed. Doesn't mean your water quality is bad. 
you need to know, which most people are going to ask, what is your ORP? That's going to tell you your oxidative potential of your aquarium, how you have oxidizers in there taking care of the insults that are coming into your aquarium. If it's very, very low, yep, then you have a problem and you have to fix the problem, whether it's a dirty filter. But if you see that you change your filter and your redox doesn't go up, then you have other problems. It's not then your filter. And even in my aquariums, I have proven time and time again, even though I change the canister filters, you know, actually as they get dirtier, I found out, the redox goes up. And that doesn't make sense. But that is what I'm seeing through the results that I'm getting with my redox meter. As the canister gets aged, the redox actually begins to go up. Is that because there's more oxidizers now involved? And it's become well developed with oxidizers, the canister filter. I would have to say yes, because it raises with, and it can raise as much as, now you may think this is not very much, but it can raise as much as a 25 to 40 millivolts. And that's a lot as the canister gets older. That's a lot of millivolt reading. It will raise your redox. So, with this higher redox potential, you get a healthier fish, like, for instance, the goldfish tank, which the goldfish uh, now, after six months, are showing no signs of, of stress or rotting fins or blood, blood lines in the fins or anything else. And you have to remember, that's a tank where the goldfish are probably eating continuously, just like the, the antique aquarium. I can do a water change and clean the bottom of all the mess that they have made. Within hours, I will see basically new poop and stuff from the goldfish, and it's green. So you know they're eating constantly. But yet, if I test the aquarium, the antique tank, I was getting zero nitrates very, very low nitrates. And the antique tank is just being run off of a canister filter only with a big BCB basket inside, a big one, where the goldfish tank is only using bags and not a nice big canister of, of uh, the BCB. It's using bags. It may not be as efficient as the antique tank or as the 90-gallon, which uses a bigger uh, BCB inside of it. I'm just experimenting with the BCB bags in the goldfish tank. Maybe that's why it's not working as well as the other two aquariums. But then again, it does have a larger fish row load, as we understand. It, it's, it's, I would say the fish load for that aquarium is too high for the size aquarium. And most people would have to agree with me. But we got to find out what's going on and uh, can the system take it with the plenum and everything. So far, so good. No worries. No, no problems with the fish. So I just wanted to bring that up through the testing. And I did want to bring up the aquarium co-op. Uh, you could probably go on it and watch it where, he, where he's talking, a Q&A he's doing. And you'll find out exactly what I'm talking about. It does not mean dirty filters, mean poor water quality. Depends, though, also on what you got going in your aquarium. You know, so you could say, you know, water quality is good. But without testing it, you're only guessing. Anyhow, that's all I wanted to talk about. And this video was to get make a quick video just to let you know that uh, it not necess necessarily means that if you have a dirty canister filter hanging on a back filter, you're going to have poor water quality. No, there's, there's a lot to it. And we do have equipment out there that can test your water immediately and tell you if water, because water quality is not just judged by ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates and phosphates. Water quality is done several other different ways. 
to tell you what your water quality is. These are just, you know, parameters that we try to set for ourselves that we try to keep as low as possible. But there are more th things involved into our aquariums that will affect the overall outcome, I guess is what I'm saying. So until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you very much for watching.